Every season of Survivor is a story. There are our main characters, sidekicks, comic reliefs, and villains. A good season of Survivor tells a compelling story that has you rooting for someone and against someone else in hopes that it all ends in a satisfying conclusion. Each story that we're going to look at together will go through one character's journey from beginning to end from the time they're introduced until they inevitably get their torch snuffed or win the game. We will look at every character moment and strategic move to determine whether they were a hero or a villain and whether they were a good or bad strategist. And with that, welcome to Once Upon an Island. Now for reference, we're only gonna be observing what the TV show is showing us and what stories being told through the show. No future seasons will be mentioned as the story and characters here have no idea about what happens in those future seasons. All character moments and strategic moves are interpreted with the mindset of what the story is trying to tell us. And now with that. 39 days, 20 people, one. Survivor. Here we go, season 20, Heroes vs. Villains. This is the first time Survivor has done a full returnee season since the last time Colby played actually on All Stars. Yeah, they haven't done a full returnee season since season eight. This is huge. They're back in Samoa for the second time ever. And I have to mention that of course, Colby is on the Hero Tribe, which means his Former Flame Jerry is on the season as well. And she's on the Villains Tribe. Good. Fun fact, Colby is entering the season with 4% body fat, which is likely not a good amount to have when entering a 39 day game of Survivor, but he's doing it. So we see everyone laying on the beach and right away, Jeff starts asking questions about whether people think they deserve the title that they were given. And Boston Rob says, eh, hero or villain, it's all based on people's perspectives. And then Tom Westman says, hey, some heroes may turn into villains and some villains may turn into heroes this season. We shall see. But when Jeff talks to Colby. In your season, Survivor Australia, you were so popular, people were naming their children Colby. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the ones I heard about named their dogs Colby. So. <laughs> A kid's not bad, I'll take that. What's the perspective now, almost 10 years later? It's taken me almost this long to really get enough perspective to appreciate it. And this is, this is my third time back and it is, it is humbling. Anybody out here feel they are on the wrong tribe? Legitimately feel they're on the wrong tribe? Oh yeah. Yes. What'd we do? So yeah. pretty much every villain thinks they should be on the hero tribe. <laughs> <laughs> Except Jerry Manthe, the original Black Widow, still owning her title. I even got a black hat for this season. Yeah, there's a little symbolism, but her hat being black and mine being white. Good versus evil? It was not a mistake. That's a good point about the hats. I do believe players get to pick their own outfits and production has to approve it. I have covered that in my behind the scenes Survivor videos. So I wonder if Colby and Jerry independently pick their hats. Interesting. Anyways, we have our first reward challenge, which is fierce. Stephanie pops her shoulder out and then pops it back in. Wow. Sandra makes sugar go topless and Rupert breaks a toe. But when Colby competes, Yo! This will not be an easy path to get back to your mat. Russell has the bag for the villain. Colby, Colby trying to push Coach off. Colby inching forward. Colby now dragging Coach. He's just got to make sure Coach doesn't drag him to the other mat. Scores for the villain. Colby getting owned by Coach. Oh my gosh, dude. I can only imagine what Colby's thinking. He's got to be like, I may as well just become a woman because there's no point on trying to maintain my masculinity now. Oh my gosh, this is not the Colby we saw in seasons two and eight. Who loses a physical contest to coach? While the heroes do win regardless of Colby's pathetic performance and at their camp, they see a bunch of chickens and they catch them, which by the way is a little suspicious. Not them catching them, but the fact that there are chickens roaming around, four of them to be exact when during season 19, there were no chickens roaming around. And yet here we are in the same location and now now they're just roaming around. Now there's just chickens magically appearing weeks later. Anyways, Colby says, oh yeah, I forgot Survivor sucks. Takes a little bit to get back into the rhythm of Survivor and go, all right, I remember this. It's gonna be miserable, but you just don't remember what it feels like to be stranded and know you're just at the tip. You're at the beginning of a long journey if you're lucky. You know, the challenge, I think our team showed its strength. Unfortunately, I didn't. 
You know, challenge was rough for me. I don't like losing at anything, and I got beat by coach. So I'm so rusty on the game, but I'm having a good time. I know that Jeans and Amanda played together, and you know Tom and Stephanie. Do you know any of those players? I don't know them, but I know that there's people that, you know, are already aligned. Yeah. I know that you know that. What do you like, know about Sari? You mean like her, how she played the game? I don't know about her. I don't, I, mean, I don't know her. She and she were in the same season, right? Yes. Um, are they friends? Well, it didn't take long for the game to start. So not only is Colby worse in challenges, but he apparently hasn't watched the show since his last time playing in season eight. But then again, he's talking to Candace from season 13. So I'm, I'm a little bit confused. Is Colby about to try and goof his way to a win here? He was such a threat in seasons two and eight that it would be wild to see him become a complete doofus and succeed at doing so. Well, at night when everyone is sleeping, Sugar has the hots for Colby. Who, who, by the way, probably doesn't even know who Sugar is because he probably didn't watch her season. And uh, she also seems to be going through some emotional stuff as well as she keeps trying to cuddle with him and he just has no interest. He literally moves away from her multiple times and she just follows him. It's a bit stalkerish. If he were doing this to her, it would be incredibly creepy. The next day we see him connect well with James and then the heroes eat their rooster, which has Colby all fired up and ready to dominate the immunity challenge. But due to no fault of Colby, they lose said challenge. Fun. So back at camp, it's pretty much determined that Sugar is the easy target since no one's aligned with her. And at Tribal Council, she is knocked out nine to one. Sugar, the tribe has spoken. That is it for the premiere. And um, yeah, this is not the same Colby we saw his prior two times. Same charisma, sure. But this Colby seems out of touch and like someone who is past their prime, which is wild considering He's only 35 on the older side for Survivor, sure, but not old at all. However, I am always on board with a story that has someone accidentally succeeding or even having a rough start and turning around. And I think that's what's going to happen here. By the way, do you like the content I make? Well, if you want to pick what I cover for videos and watch everything up to six months early, then consider joining my Once Upon an Island Patreon. You can cancel at any time and there is a 15% discount if you do sign up for one year. Thank you for your support. Episode 2 sees the heroes lose immunity because too many people try to take the lead during the challenge instead of just letting JT do it like they designated him to. Colby's not one of those people by the way, he just lets JT take the lead, for the most part. But back at camp, James gets really upset and starts to pin the blame of the loss on Stephanie since she lost all of her immunity challenges in her first time playing in Season 10 while forgetting how successful she was in season 11, just completely ignoring that Guatemala run she had. It comes across as weirdly aggressive, and Tom straight up says that, hey, if Stephanie goes, it's me, and then it's you, Colby, next. So apparently, we have now discovered that Colby is aligned with the bottom dwellers. Not good, Colby, not good. But if they can flip Candace and Cerise votes, then they could get out Amanda. At Tribal Council, James, I mean, he's bullying Stephanie. There's no other way of saying it and Colby steps in. There was a certain individual who voiced out their opinion that they were being quiet. So who was that? Stephanie. You've been on the tribe, you've lost your entire team. I don't want that to happen. Yeah, it was very romantic that you survived all your teammates on your tribe. James, this isn't this about is me. Winners. I thought we said it's not about me. We get this wrong, it's not about me. You wouldn't have said nothing. I would have still been talking to y'all. James, you just attacked her. You expect I'm her to sit here and not defend herself? You just told Propes Which there was said. one person that cost us that challenge exactly. today. So you cannot expect her to sit here and not defend herself, James. And, I expect and her you're to continuing to attack her. Now you're getting back to her past season. Just let it be, bro. The two of y'all, how about that one? Is that good enough? Make it three of them all, okay? Alliances have been made, divisions have been cast in the tribe. You repeating things and just bullying people I'm into bullying them people. until they back off. You were bullying Stephanie. I was not. Jeff asked who you were speaking about and you said her name. That does mean her. That doesn't mean y'all. That means Stephanie. Good for Colby and Tom. Real heroes stand up for someone who is being bullied, even if it is the unpopular thing to do. So they all go to vote and yeah, Suri and Candace don't flip and Stephanie is voted out six to three. Steph, the tribe has spoken. Some advice. Next time y'all lose the challenge, a little less cursing off your tribe might help. Keep your mouth shut. Oh, come on. I told you James was bullying. Episode 3 is Colby saying, wow, this game is much uglier than I would like. And I want to remind you that Colby was on All Stars, one of the darkest seasons of all time. 
So if he's saying this is dark, that's saying a lot. At the immunity challenge, the heroes go full tilt. Survivor's ready. Go! Wow, Colby was fired up. Too bad that doesn't carry over to episode four though, where it all comes down to him and Tyson for reward and he loses it. Back at camp, the heroes finally discover the clue for the hidden immunity idol, which is in the coffee that they won back in episode three. And with this clue, Tom finds the idol, Amanda catches him, and Tom tells Colby that they can use this as a tool to make something happen. Colby says, this is the opening we needed. The heroes lose immunity, what else is new, and straight up, unless the challenge is purely physical, it seems like they're gonna struggle hard in every challenge. JT says with Tom having an idol, he might work with him to make something happen after all, which is great. He says, Tom and Colby, they're straight shooters. If they tell you something, they mean it. And I take that to the bank. So JT says, hey, Let's get out Suri. She isn't helpful in challenges, but if she makes the merge, then Suri becomes unstoppable. So, at Tribal Council... I'll read the votes. Jeff. Thank you. This is indeed a hidden immunity idol. Any votes cast for Tom will not count. First vote. Tom does not count. Tom does not count. Tom does not count. Colby. That's one vote, Colby. Colby. Sari. Sari. Fourth person voted out of Survivor Heroes versus Villains. Sari. Sari. The tribe has spoken. That was the best possible result. If not for the idol and the flip in the information from JT, Tom would have been gone and Colby would be next. Episode 5 begins and Rupert says, JT is a snake, but Colby. He says JT is a hero, and this is just like Boston Rob said at the beginning, it's all a matter of perspective. So it is now time for reward, where Jeff says, here, try some of this chocolate and... With just a little taste of chocolate. Oh, oh my God. God. Yeah, Jeff. Oh, oh, wow. Colby, you have a look on your face like this is annoying or somehow insulting. I handed you the plate and you were like, I don't want this. I'm not annoyed with you. I'm ready to get to the challenge. Free offer of chocolate. I'm don't just curious. It. Let's go. I got the message, brother. We'll go when I'm ready. Heroes, you're sitting out one person. It has to be a man. I'll sit down. I'll sit down. I'll sit down. Colby going to sit this one out for the heroes. Uh, did Colby just sit out of the challenge after saying all of that to Jeff? Why, why, why did he get so riled up just to sit out anyways? Colby really is just goofing his way through this season. We then see the tribes compete in Schmergen Brawl, which actually got somebody medically evacuated last season. So in this season, James gets injured as well. In fact, he overextends his leg and it's bad. They lose reward and despite the injury, James is allowed to return, which I'm shocked by, but it's not life or death, so I guess it makes sense. But I must say, James isn't helpful during the immunity challenge when the heroes lose on a puzzle and back at camp, Tom and Colby say, obviously James needs to go. But then we see JT flip-flopping, telling literally everyone he's on their side. And you can't be on everyone's side which has Colby stating, We're going to another tribal council and most everybody's looking to JT for a vote. And the reason for that is because JT is so wishy-washy. JT flip-flops at every opportunity that he has, you know, because he's clearly just playing the hand that suits him today. So whose side is JT really on? Well, I need to let you know that JT's basically playing everyone. He is the villain on the Heroes Tribe, straight up. So when the Heroes all go to vote at tribal council, First vote. Tom, James, Tom, two votes, Tom, James, that's two votes, Tom, two votes, James, Tom, fifth person voted out of Survivor Heroes versus Villains, Tom, that's four, that's enough, Tom, the tribe has spoken. 
Okay, so the heroes are down nine to six, and in reality, one of their six is injured, so it's almost like nine to five. And they say no man's an island, but Colby is an island, stuck on an island. He's at an all-time low, and considering the hindrance James is, they're likely going to lose immunity again, and this time probably vote the Colpster out. At the reward challenge, we learn that both tribes are going to tribal council no matter what, which is just... That's just great. And Boston Rob wins the reward for the villains. And since Colby did so poorly in this challenge, he knows he's likely gone next and pulls a 4D chess move out of his hat. Well, I just want to say one thing, guys. I know I'm going home tonight, so there's no, there's no need for any scrambling or anything like that. There are absolutely no hard feelings on my part. So let's just have a good, relaxed afternoon. And uh, going in there tonight, I say we give them as little information as we can if they're going to be sitting in. So I just said, let's enjoy our afternoon, head to tribal council tonight. Um, and I meant it. Does Colby even want to be here? No, really, I I'm like seriously asking, does he want to be here? Despite his surrender speech, the tribe still debates between voting him or James out since when James at least tries, he's ineffective, but at least he's trying. And Colby just seems to not pull through consistently. He's very inconsistent. We then see Colby talk to James and... Even though we haven't had a lot of fun since we started, I haven't had a lot of fun. Colby doesn't want to be here. There's no way that's the Colby of old. One of the baddest competitors ever. He has not done anything. It is bring almost brought me to tears. It's like my Superman sucks. I mean, I still love this game. You know? When you turn on and start winning, we'd be all right. <sighs> And I don't mind that as long as you start winning. Right. But if it's the old sleepy ass Kobe, you know, get beat by a fat man and a cripple. That ain't right. You know what I'm saying? I hear you. Is this the wake up call Colby needs or is it far too late? After all, the five individual immunity challenges he won are wildly different than the challenges they do now. But even so, he seems wildly inconsistent. We go to tribal council where more talk persists about Colby's downfall since All Stars. And this is the, pretty much one of the baddest survivors ever growing up. I'm not that old. <laughs> but you know what I mean. <laughs> Watching the show forever. I get here, he got slammed by the Dragon Slayer, picked up and brought in the van. Today he got beat by a cripple and a fat dude on an obstacle course. It's like finding out Superman was in a big girdle. You see the muscles and you get up close and there's nothing but a fat suit. So I'm like, honestly, do you want to be here? Because if not, I'll stay here because I like it here. James, job is going he survived but only because james was seriously injured but hey everyone needs some luck on survivor to do well episode 7 has colby saying wow i'm still here what are the odds but now i got to perform in challenges or i'm gonna be gone next so at the reward challenge Go! Go! number in this challenge. For Jerry. For Jerry. Colby now Jerry. takes it from Jerry. Jerry. Colby just tosses Jerry out of the way. Candace has it for the heroes. Candace oh, scores for the heroes. Go. JT sprinting after that ball. Passes to Colby underneath the goal. This challenge is over. Heroes win reward. Yeah. Yeah. Colby was by far the MVP of that match. The Colpster is back. Maybe. While on reward, the tribe gets a clue to an idol which JT says, hey, we're gonna use this and find it together and use it together against the villains. We then see Colby at the immunity challenge, kicking butt and taking names, and yeah, the heroes win. Episode eight has JT finding the idol, and it's weird that he did this by himself and not with everyone else like he claimed he would, but Colby's like, cool, awesome dude, good find. And I must admit, while this may seem silly in Colby's part to not be suspicious of JT, I think it's a positive, he's just, easy going. Colby seems to take things in stride more often than we have seen prior, which makes him easier to live with than some others. But then, at the reward challenge, the heroes spot a trend happening with the villains. Randy, Tyson, and now, Boston Rob have been eliminated, whereas every woman still remains. What's even more curious about that is that Boston Rob was single-handedly winning them immunities, and now he's gone? It looks like the Black Widow Brigade of Micronesia is back. But also, the villains brought their entire camp with them, and Colby's like, the heck? I don't remember the note saying anything about a merge. So Jeff says this. Everybody drop 
your <laughs> expectations. <laughs> we are not merging. No merge yet. The villains are just being dumb. The heroes do win reward, and while talking amongst themselves, they realize that, yeah, the women are controlling the villain's tribe. And we will know this for a fact if Coach or Russell is voted off next. But I must mention that Colby has been really stepping up in challenges, as he and JT are the reason they win immunity. And in episode 9, at the reward challenge, they see that sure enough, Coach is gone. Russell is the last male villain, and not a single female villain has been voted out at all. The women are clearly running things again. But in between all the chaos, we get this little moment between Jerry and Colby. Hey, Colby. A rematch. Oh, Jerry Manthe, Colby Donaldson going all the way back to season two. And another rematch, Sandra and Rupert going back to the Pearl Islands, our seventh season. Love you. I hope they both reach the merge and we can see them together again. The heroes lose reward and back at camp, everyone's like, what the heck are we going to do come the merge? At best, if they win the next immunity, they go in tied five to five. So JT, the chosen one, has a brilliant idea. I got a plan. Uh-oh, JT has got a plan. Russell knows he's going next. I give him a hidden immunity idol, he votes out Parvati. Bam, Parvati's gone. Then just pick the girls off. Pick them off of sitting ducks and vote Russell's ass out six. Ah, uh, that is so risky. Why didn't Colby say that's risky? What? Why did no one say that's risky? No one has seen Russell play on his initial season yet and only a few months prior, JT won the first ever Perfect Survivor game while also winning fan favorites, so he is riding that high. But Russell, Russell's an unknown. No one has ever been a complete unknown on a returning season before, so this is new territory and it's risky. JT does write a letter to Russell with very detailed instructions on how to play the idol as if Russell's like five years old. And while the heroes do win immunity, good job, Colby, this takes place during and after said challenge. <laughs> Okay, the challenge is over. You go to JT. Okay, he's gonna give you something. Why do you get for the obstacle? Use it tonight. Protect yourself. Get rid of one of them. Come on board with us. Okay? Yeah. 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 Okay? Yeah. 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 Good. Get rid of her ass. What's that to take you home? Damn, we did it. And we got the idol out to Russell. This is huge. Will it pan out? We shall see. Episode 10 has everyone saying, please, it's day 25. Can we have a merge? It needs to happen. And sure enough, the villains arrive at their camp. And while it looks like Russell survived, so is Parvati. What? The heroes and villains are tied up five to five. And what a comeback for the heroes, by the way. And then we see Russell talk to JT and Rupert, and he says, hey, no worries. Parvati played an idol last night. That's why we're both safe. And Courtney was voted off instead, which makes sense. But now it's time for new buffs and a new tribe name. So what are we calling ourselves? Can we decide? We could be the Hillen. We could be Yin Yang. Yeah. 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 Okay, we can do what? Yeah. All villains. All villains? We're all villains. Really, Jerry? We're all winners. We're all all-stars. We're all something good and positive. Why do you have to keep the villain attitude? But I guess that's what villains do. 19 seasons later, and Jerry is still annoying Colby. I love it. What the heroes don't love enough, though, is the villains eating all their bananas before they even ripen. I mean, they are green bananas. And speaking of bananas, where do these even come from? The season 19 tribes didn't have massive bushels of bananas, so... This is suspicious as well. Chickens and bananas, I'm on to you. At the immunity challenge, Parvati drops on purpose and lets Danielle win, which is strange. Consider this, the last tribal, she supposedly had Russell play an idol to get her out, so she felt like she needed to play her idol. So why wouldn't she suspect that Russell's about to flip on her? Why would she give Danielle immunity? Back at camp, Colby says, hey, we should tell Russell to vote for Parvati and we should all vote for Sandra or Jerry instead in case Parvati still has her idol. So we go to tribal council and... You know what, Jeff? Sandra, not for you. Get out of here, for real. <laughs> Jerry, that one's for you too. Damn it. Thanks, Jerry. Sandra, these are both hidden immunity idols. Any votes cast for Sandra or Jerry will not count. Jerry does not count. Jerry does not count. Jerry 
does not count. Jerry does not count. Jerry does not count. JT. JT, that's two votes, JT. 11th person voted out and the third member of our jury. JT. JT, Travis spoken. Parvati had two idols, one that she found and one that JT gifted Russell and he gave to her. Yeah, JT's idol was in Parvati's hands and it is the reason he went home. What's even worse is that Sandra tried warning the heroes that Russell is a snake and JT said, Sandra's a villain, Russell, you can't trust her. Oh, the irony. Like, what is Russell? Chop liver? Rupert says, we're screwed. Unless maybe, just maybe, Sandra will give us a second chance. If they can flip Sandra, they'll be up five to four. But in the meantime, we go to the reward challenge where Colby wins it for his team and that has now three challenges he has won for the team he is on that I can count, maybe four. As I said before, he's wildly inconsistent though and he's definitely lost them some. And while on said reward... Popcorn's good, huh? Yeah, it's really good. I found a clue in the bowl of popcorn. I am freaking out. This is like so much power right now. This could be a million dollars. Are you hiding under the bed? Amanda, I'll seriously grab it out of your hand. Will you just relax for a second? Then give it back to me. What are you doing? You're a psychopath. Yes, it is. <laughs> I found it. You're psychotic. Colby, are you serious what she just did? I didn't even see what happened. I was watching Treasure Island. I'm like it's shaking your, It's right your now. clue, Danielle. It's your clue. You found it. I ended up giving the clue back and gave it to Danielle like an idiot. And then Colby wasn't backing me up and I was just like, oh my God. I was just like, are you kidding me? Ah. Colby being too mature for this nonsense and not caring is next level. Notice how Amanda doesn't blame him because ultimately it isn't his call. Even if the edit is leading us to believe he has a say in the matter. That's why I put the villain tag, but... Let's be real, it's not up to Colby. Oh, and I need to mention that Amanda has a great nose for idols this season. She sussed out Tom, JT, and now Danielle. If Amanda's within earshot of an idol being found, oh, she'll know about it. Back at camp, Sandra talks to Colby and spills the beans on everything that happened on the Villains Tribe pre-merge and says, if we have the numbers, I will flip and vote out Russell or Parvati, but that's who I want to vote out, Russell or Parvati. Jerry wins individual immunity, which leaves the door open for Russell and Parvati. But plot twist, Sandra says, I just found out a hero has flipped to the villains already. And her name is Candace. As it turns out, by the way, Sandra's right. Candace is the Judas of the Heroes Tribe, selling them out for what? Sixth place at best? So when Sandra confronts Candace on this. Candace went and told Russell every single thing that was said, including that I was on board with Rupert, Amanda, and the rest of them. And now we're screwed and now they won't trust us anymore after this. Why are you switching now? She's gone. I'm not switching. Listen, you, you're with us? We're okay. Sandra, you're good. Candace is on our side. We're voting for poverty. You're going to help me, Candace? Or am I screwed? What do you mean to help you? What do you want me to do? Are we going to do this? Yes. yes. Okay, so yeah, if this thing be... doesn't work, it's Candace's fault. So we'll no. <laughs> so really, I mean, really, if it doesn't work, then Candace is the one that spilled the beer. Candace just denies, denies, denies. What a Judas. At Tribal Council, Russell compliments everyone on the Villains Tribe. Except Sandra, he says she's kind of just here. Wow, what a way to make friends with the potential jurors, Russell. So they all go to vote and... Hope I'm doing the right thing and playing it for myself this time. First vote. Amanda. Parvati. Amanda, two votes Amanda. Parvati, we're tied. Two votes Amanda, two votes Parvati. Parvati. Amanda. Amanda, that's four votes, Amanda. Twelfth person voted out in the fourth member of our jury. Amanda. Amanda, the tribe has spoken. Episode 12 starts and Colby and Rupert are mad at Candace and they say she's pathetic and weak for flipping on us. Which, by the way, I agree with completely here. Absolute horrendous gameplay on her part. Parvati wins immunity and with that, Jeff reads everyone the hidden immunity idol clue. So back at camp, Rupert pulls a fast one and pretends to find it by stuffing a rock in his pocket, which fools Russell completely. As it turns out, the villains plan on splitting their six votes between Candace and Rupert. I mean, Rupert's idols really got them flustered, even though it's just a rock. And Colby's like, hey, we could take advantage of this. I have an idea. They're gonna split the votes tonight because they got six of them, right? So they're gonna send half of them your way. 
the other half are either going to go towards me or towards Candace. Candace. And even if three of them vote for you and you don't have the right. item, you're, you're still, still safe. five minutes for Candace. It's exactly. I could be going home tonight if, if it doesn't work, but if it does, me and you get to vote Candace out <laughs> and right after she votes Amanda oh, out. That would be one. And then we still got a shot. It's so simple, and yet the villains have not accounted for it at all. At Tribal Council, Candace pretends that no matter what she did, Amanda was gone no matter what. She says, I had no say in that. Uh, no, that's incorrect, Candace. She was not going if you didn't flip. You are the reason Amanda is gone, and the villains have the numbers now. So, it's time to vote. I can honestly say I'm proud of the way I played this game. Can you? Mom always told me, if you don't have something nice to say, don't say anything at all. Rupert. Candace. One vote, Candace. Rupert. That's two votes, Rupert. Candace. Rupert. That's three votes, Rupert. Candace. That's four votes, Candace. 13th person voted out and the fifth member of our jury. Candace. Candace, the tribe has spoken. Yes, yes. Time for the go. As Colby said, revenge is sweet. Back at camp, Parvati says game set match. The heroes are all going to be gone in the next two votes. But then something wild happens. Russell is insanely jealous of the relationship between Parvati and Danielle. He thinks Parvati's his, and he doesn't want Danielle in his way. He wants Danielle out of this game. Colby is pleasantly shocked to hear this, and of course he's like, yeah, that's a great idea, Russell. Let's do that. We then go to Tribal Council, where Russell proceeds to make friends with future jury members by gaslighting and berating Danielle in front of everyone. Great look. So they all go to vote, and... First vote, Rupert. Danielle. Rupert. Two votes, Rupert. Danielle. Rupert. Three votes, Rupert. Danielle, we're tied. 14th person voted out and the sixth member of our jury. Danielle. Danielle, the tribe is spoken. Rupert and Colby survived those last two tribals with some luck and strategy, but now we're at the final six and they need to step it up to make it to the final three. How the lackadaisical Colby is here amazes me though, and I love it. Episode 13 starts with a magical, top of the line, has to be seen to be believed. Sprint phone containing videos from home that makes Colby cry. Thank you, Sprint. I will take 10 of those. At the reward challenge, he hugs his older brother, Reed, and the emotions are at an all-time high. They really love each other. Reed is the best big brother in the world. And now for this reward challenge, Colby gets the luxury of getting to work with him. Reed is so smart and amazing, they're going to win. Survivors ready? Go! <laughs> Tell me what to do, Reed. Try it up a little bit. There you go, try that. Colby falls short. Think about the prize. Huh? Smooth. You're doing good. Reed, I'm throwing it farther. Oh, okay. Now come on. Smooth. Reed, talk to me for God's sake. Keep this. it straight. Keep it straight. Oh, Reed. I did. I held it right there. Good. Smooth. Paul be blaming everything on his big brother. He's been that way 34 days, Reed. Reed, tell me what you want. Just throw it. Just throw it high. Come on, Reed. Rip. Little brother getting frustrated with his big brother. Come on. Reed. What's that? And Jennifer, win reward! When I said Reed is smart and amazing, I meant he's the worst. Obviously, he held up Colby from winning. On a serious note, Colby and Reed are like most brothers. They love each other, but they also kind of hate each other. Jerry wins said reward, and because she didn't take Russell with her, he is livid. So back at camp, he's like, screw those women. I'm making a deal with you guys. When Jerry got to announce who she's going to bring, I was fully expecting her to bring me. Why wouldn't she? I've been taking care of Jerry this entire time. She's not gonna take me. I hope that burger literally tastes like a million dollars because that was a million dollar decision. Oh. These girls are a bunch of unappreciative little bitches. Both of them. I wanna trust you all the way to the final three. Um, Russell, final three. Final three. Colby, final three. I gotta think about winning this game. And poverty is a huge threat for the million dollars. She's the only one that could give me a shot for it in my mind. So now, if poverty doesn't win immunity, she's going home. I mean, that sounds incredibly stupid for Russell, but this video is about Colby, so great for Colby. At the immunity challenge, Colby pulls a Crystal Cox, not that he would know who that is since he hasn't watched Survivor since season eight, and drops out of this challenge in 15 seconds. Gonna have to be faster than that though to beat the Olympian Colby. Parvati ends up winning, beating Rupert, and back at camp, Russell says tonight, we vote off Sandra. So we go to Tribal Council where the villains are just bickering back and forth. And I want to freeze frame right here. 
This is what I want you to see when understanding Colby and everyone else. This is how he looks this entire tribal. How this man is on track to be in the final three with almost minimal effort is amazing to me. He doesn't even care. So they all go to vote and... Should I let you finish? No need. First vote, Rupert. Rupert, that's two votes, Rupert. Sandra, does not count. Sandra, does not count. 15th person voted out and the seventh member of our jury. Rupert, Rupert, the tribe has spoken. Colby is the last remaining hero and we have reached the finale. Is it in anyone's best interest to bring him to the end? No, because as Colby says, he hasn't made enemies with anyone on the jury. And weirdly enough, I think he gets all the heroes votes if he does reach the end, which is four, which could be enough to win. I think you need five, but four is quite a lot. Back at camp, the villains are fighting. What a shocker. And Colby says, yep, this is only good for me. I'm the last hero standing. And once again, the villains go at it. And any time this dysfunctional family of villains is not getting along, it takes the attention off me. But we all know as soon as he loses immunity, he's gone now. No one wants him in the final three. Because at this point, like I said, he pretty much has four guaranteed votes. And so Colby needs to do something that he's done very inconsistently this season. He needs to go full tilt and stop being wildly inconsistent for just two challenges. And he might have this game in the bag. I cannot believe it right now. Colby, who's been slacking and like just goofing his way through this game, is at the end and in position to win. Tina Wesson would be proud. So at the immunity challenge... Sandra, first person out of this challenge. Jerry, can't hold it any longer. Jerry is the second person out of this challenge. We are now down to three. Russell wobbly. Russell can do nothing but watch his plates fall. Russell is out of the challenge. Without warning, Colby's plates drop. Poverty, safe tonight at Tribal Council, guaranteed a spot in the final four. Oh my gosh, he was so freaking close too. He tried his hardest and he failed. But remember in episode six when he gave his infamous surrender speech and then the tribe proceeded to vote out James instead? Well, that 40 chess move is back in its evolved 2.0 form. Let's enjoy day 37. I'm proud to be the last hero standing, but I'm not gonna hustle today. I'm not gonna scramble. I have enjoyed <laughs> playing with you guys. I really have. Pretty good speech, actually. Hell, I almost convinced myself I was giving up. But I don't know how to quit. It's just not in me. I've never quit anything in my life. So when the time was right, I made one more attempt. So the idea is to get rid of me and then hopefully get rid of poverty tomorrow and take Sandra in? That's the idea, but it's not. Right. My case is, if we get rid of Sandra tonight, then the three of us have a better shot of beating Poverty tomorrow. Yeah, I think Poverty's gonna get a ton of votes, especially if she keeps winning like this. I haven't had a chance to talk to Jerry yet. I got Jerry. Trust me. Amazing. Colby is so good in confessionals. But don't get me wrong, he's too little, too late. But yeah, amazing charisma when he turns it on. At Tribal Council, he talks about how the villains are constantly imploding and they can't trust each other. Only three out of the four can reach the end after all. They have to turn on each other. So they all go to vote and... 16th person voted out and the eighth member of our jury. Colby. Colby, tribe has spoken. Had a lot of fun. Unbelievable highs and lows. Uh, in the first half of the game, a lot more lows than highs. I'm so glad I came back and I'm so... Uh, I feel so privileged to have had the opportunity. Being the last hero, uh, I never really thought of myself as a hero. Dirt certainly part of that tribe, but the term hero just never did fit well. Um, and even though I'm proud of making it this far, I'm just incredibly frustrated that I couldn't uh, figure out a way to do better in the challenges. Ultimately, my fate was in my hands today, and I couldn't pull it out. So let's break this down. How is Colby Donaldson as a character? I think his final words that we watched earlier say so much. I just love how brutally honest he is. Good or bad, Colby always tells us what he's thinking. However, the contrast between his first few times playing and this time are so obvious. He had no funny one-liners and he looked visibly down 
multiple times and it felt like an all-star player came out of retirement when they had no desire to do so. This is not the same Colby we saw in seasons two and eight. This was a retired Colby. But despite the severe lack of Jerry and Colby content we got, which I am not a fan of, I am glad he was here so there was not the infinite what if Colby was on Heroes vs. Villains question we would have had had he not come back. Out of 22 character moments shown on the show, 17 were heroic and 5 were villainous, making Colby Donaldson a hero character on Survivor Heroes vs. Villains. Now how is Colby Donaldson as a strategist? Eh good actually i mean he made final five yeah he sucked in some challenges but then in others he beasted them a lot has changed since he last played and his skill set remains the same as before he's just more tired now and i'm sure that coming into the season with only four percent body fat did not help but no matter what you think factually he was two immunity challenges away from getting first or second place no way does russell or poverty beat him at the end maybe jerry or sandra but yeah colby came super close and the collapse of the heroes is not even on him at all he did what he was supposed to do and socially played well amidst the chaos of the villains and heroes well heroes pretending to be villains out of 39 strategic moments shown on the show believe it or not 24 were smart and 15 were dumb making colby donaldson a smart strategist on survivor heroes versus villains Hey, thanks for watching and doubly thanks for liking and subscribing to this channel. I'll see you all next time.